Hi guys, welcome to today's episode of Pop Culture with Socially Devoted. I am one half of your co-host Dana Giacovello at Dana Giacovello on Twitter and today we are here with actor Michael Coleman from Once Upon a Time. Hello. Hi everybody. <laughs> this is Tommy. <laughs> Uh, at Tico71 on Twitter, and uh, I'll be your other half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so we're just going to jump right in. Um, obviously, like we just said, you are you play Happy on the uh, hit show Once Upon a Time, which is a huge success, and everybody loves it. Um, but what are some other projects that you're doing or that you have going on that you can tell us about? Because I know in the past when I've spoken to you, you have a lot of things going on that you're doing, like, all over the place. <laughs> you know, I am... Um... I have a couple, I also work as a writer, so I have uh, a couple of feature films that I've written that have been optioned, and I'm in different rooms with producers trying to uh, to fix them, I guess, and uh, get them to where we're ready to shoot. Um, I've also been working with some lovely people from Ireland uh, on a show called Hipsterverse, and uh, in addition to that, I've been working on a lot of, um, Sneezy and I just finished a movie uh, produced by his brother, and uh, that's uh, coming out, I guess, later this fall, uh, last night in suburbia. And then, uh, yeah, I've been working with a lot of different people, a bunch of, uh, there's a, a, a web series coming out called Paranormal uh, Solutions Incorporated, which has a lot of different uh, local actors in here, many of who have done uh, stints on Once Upon a Time, and yeah, I've been pretty busy. Oh, great. That's awesome. It's always good to keep busy. <laughs> it is, it is. Very nice. So other than acting, what are some of the other things you enjoy doing on your downtime? If you have downtime with all that schedule you have going on. <laughs> it's a pretty tough schedule. Um, truthfully, um, most of my downtime is centers around, uh, I guess, my family and my friends. And, uh, and I play and watch a lot of hockey. So it's a, a pretty s typical Canadian answer, but that's what I do. <laughs> I play a lot of hockey, I watch a lot of hockey, and then I hang out with my friends and family. And then uh, in my spare time, I do Once Upon a Time and write movies and TV shows. <laughs> that sounds like a full schedule. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really great. But that's nice that you actually get, you, you're working with some of your co-stars on different things too, so that's got to be fun and awesome to do that. Yeah, no, it's, it's incredibly cool. I actually also... I've been fortunate enough to, I, I own um, an acting school here as well, so um, many of the cast members that have come into Once Upon a Time teach there, so it's a place where I get to hang out with a lot of different uh, actors and, um, and students that wish to be actors, and it's, it's a, I'm in a good space. I'm, I've got a lot of good things going on. Great. That's, that's excellent. Now, I'm sure you get this question all the time, but like, what is, the, what is one of the best things that you found working on such a wonderful show such as Once Upon a Time? I mean, it's got a great message. It's got an incredibly loyal uh, fan following. You see it on Twitter all the time. I see you very active on it. You know, I know you just recently did an Ask Happy. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's cool. There's, a, there's, I mean, there's almost too many things to mention um you know i've been i've worked on a lot of different i've done little stints on a whole bunch of series and um i've never in my life uh met a fan base so passionate about uh about a series of characters and stories it's it's humbling to see uh what everybody brings it's also um i mean to, to be able to work with people like adam and eddie and and jane and all the writers of the show i mean i think they're arguably some of the strongest writers we have today uh, in the industry, and to be able to um, have them put words in your mouth is a, is a lovely, lovely thing. Um, and I think, you know, in addition to the incredible, you know, crew and the fans, I mean, the cast, you'll find that there universally there seems to be uh, a, a, a real appreciation for um, bringing together a bunch of iconic characters that all of us would have grown up with, uh, bring them to life and, and, and introduce them to a whole new generation. Um, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but I think it's actually uh, an incredible honor for all of us to get to do that. Uh, from everybody who writes it, watches it, performs it, all of it. I think it's really cool to be a part of this moment in time. So, yeah, uh, hopefully that answers that. I don't know. Yeah, no, it totally does. I mean, I, I, I love the show and admire it. I watch it every Sunday, and I can see it's just, it just – it does get an amazing response. And it's one of, you know, one of the biggest responses that I've seen on Twitter in a long time for a show, like, where the actors can't even, like, get the answers to the questions because, like, so many people are – 
constantly tweeting them and asking them questions. It's, it's almost overwhelming in a way, but it's also a great feeling to know that you have such a, a loyal, you know, that loyal following for your show. Yeah. And, and it's worldwide. It's, you know, it's uh, the fans that I've spoken to from Brazil or overseas or like it's just everywhere. It's, um, it's amazing to see, you know, to me that's this whole thing with social media is very cool and it's neat that we get to interact with everybody around the globe and to see everybody come together for, you know, having this common denominator, this common thread that draws around it's, it's amazing and 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 the coolness of it all isn't lost on us i still remember the very first episode we did in season one like the very first thing we did and um you know i was friends with some of the seven dwarfs prior to us being cast as the seven dwarfs and i remember us you know running into each other's trailers like oh my god i just had jiminy cricket <laughs> so you also get starstruck a little bit yeah being and starstruck it was- on set <laughs> See, I think, I think the very first time I ever met Josh and Jenny was, I feel like I didn't even see them until it was like they're up there getting married. And it was like, oh, gosh. Oh, wow. White, man. We, we work with Snow White. I know. That was a great scene. That was a great scene. And it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, my gosh, I get to work with Snow White and Prince Charming. <laughs> that epic, iconic moment where Lana comes in and the doors and the Yeah, mentor. that was great. That's that's how you get, like, you make first impressions once, and that was my Im- first impression of Lana Perry, and I'm like, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Disney and fairy tales, if they've always been a part of your life, and if it's something, and why do you think other people are attracted to this so much? Because there's such a huge attraction to fairy tales and storytelling in general. Yeah, um, so yeah, my, my, my family and I, have always uh, we go to Disney uh, Disneyland several times a year. Uh, I grew up watching, you know, um, Disney. I grew up Sunday nights. I grew up watching Uncle Walt on Sunday nights. Uh, <laughs> you know, that was Disney for us. So to be a part of Disney on Sunday nights right now is honestly a little, little surreal. It's even you know four seasons in, it it, it isn't lost on me. Um, how cool that is. Um, you know, uh, my wife and I, we had one of our very first dates was to Disneyland and we drove all the way from Vancouver. So that's a, that's a bit of a long first date. And then, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we did our honeymoon in Disney world. Um, yeah, we spent a lot of time in Disney, you know, um, I have a couple of friends on the show that have managed to get us, uh, uh, a lunch at, uh, you know, the uh, incredibly cool Club 33 there. Um, yeah, we um big fans of Disney. Uh, always have been, always will be. And um, to work on something like this that I grew up with and, and help uh, introduce it to a new generation is incredibly cool. Um, and it's, you know, I think it's something that, you know, speaks to everybody's desire to simply trust in the universe if you do the right thing that good things will work out and that's you know the heart of most fairy tales is just keep doing the right things and you know you will find your friends you will find your love you will find yourself you'll find it all just oh, yeah. keeping person and it's you know i think that's what you know every day we we make choices that make us good or evil and it's it's never too late to stop being evil and it's <laughs> good and you know that's the heart of it i mean you know i think you know adam and eddie you know have done an amazing job with that with a lot of the characters on this show that you know they, they flip some certain things upside down they've taken some of the most uh, arguably evil characters in the universe and, and gave them opportunities for redemption and you know i don't think that message is lost in anybody i think we all sometimes feel a little evil and sometimes we all feel a little good and it's that battle inside that uh, you know we all struggle with every day and uh <laughs> You know, I think, you know, that's that's what draws us to this, is that if it's never too late and it's always okay to be good, and if you are, good things generally happen. Absolutely. And I, like that they, I do like that they give gray areas for the evil characters because you can't hate them completely. You yeah. Know, sometimes you find yourself pulling for the evil character because, like, with uh, the evil queen, she has a heart, and you feel sorry for her sometimes. Sometimes you actually want her to win. It, that's yeah. odd, but it's a good thing. Well, I think it's, it's, it's also speaks to, you know, I think it's really easy for a lot of us to think people are born evil, but I don't know if anybody really is. I think, you know, I think that all of us have different circumstances in our life that, you know, draw us to one way or another. And, 
you know, hopefully we all live long enough to learn the lessons that allow us to be on the right side of good and evil. And uh, <laughs> I, I think I think the writers of this series do an amazing job at uh, at dancing that line and playing with that that theory or that idea. They they absolutely do. And like Tommy was saying with the evil queen queen role, it's so obvious that people love to hate her and they just love her because they feel sorry for her. And even when she's bad, even when she goes full evil queen, it's like they, the fan base is still behind her. And that's kind of showing you the message the show gives out is kind of connecting. Like what Eddie and Adam are trying to portray, they're actually succeeding in doing. And you can see that with a lot of the different characters that go from evil to good and they kind of bounce back and forth and they're really trying to like re almost repent in a way and you can see that. And I, and I think a lot of it is, you know, I think the fact that so many people have gravitated to the evil queen character can't be lost on the incredible uh, talent of Lana Perea who you know, brings a level of, you know, truth and humanity to, yeah, to what would yeah. be really easy to play a, a cartoon villain, and she doesn't. She, you know, she plays an absolutely lovely, fully developed human being who's had <laughs> layers. She has layers. Yeah, layers. She's, she's so versatile in the roles. Like, she can go from young young Regina to evil queen to old Regina. It's, it's like, it's all over the place where it's just, like, it's, it's amazing. One of my favorite things... With regards to the show, as I remember, it's probably about two years ago where my mother called me. Uh, it was like a Sunday night. And she said, "You know what? I think one of my I think my favorite character on that show is that uh, Lana Perea." <laughs> you know, Mom, I'm also I'm also on that show. <laughs> Yeah, really, what's that about? <laughs> I'm a QCB, I'm happy. Yeah, you're my second favorite character. She's really good. Well, at least you're in the top five. That's, yeah. that's important. You're hard to disagree with. That's she right. she puts you second. I mean... I'll take, take second. That's not bad. But yeah, even my own mother. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? What are you um, going to do? And she's not wrong. What are you going to do? <laughs> that's, a, that, that's adorable. I prefer Lana to myself. What do you think? <laughs> That's adorable. Yeah, it, it, everybody does such a great job on that show, and I just I love the cast. I think everybody's awesome and amazing, and it's just a fun show to watch. And the talent is extraordinary, and it's just so great. And um, but if if I know that you uh, we, we were discussing earlier that you have a I know you have a Twitter, but where can people find you to connect with you? I know you have some other social media sites, and and tell me tell us your Twitter name too. I mean, I know it, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh. Um, on on Facebook, I'm just Michael Coleman on Facebook. Um, on Twitter, I'm at the number one Michael Coleman. Um, I my acting school is just schoolcreative.com. I get a lot of people who want to get into acting, and they can find me at schoolcreativeoneword.com. Um, I have a website called actormichaelcoleman.com. Um, I I love living in this like I grew up in a in a world before um uh, uh telephone recording devices. So the fact that I can <laughs> communicate with people around the globe like this it's still incredibly new to me and you know forgive me when I act really new because all of this still is very new to me and it's I'm in awe like I, I some of my loveliest conversations are with people uh, from around the world who speak languages I don't speak and it's you know encouraged me to learn new languages and <laughs> I just yeah like if, if I'm you know to a fault I will usually communicate with people um from around the world on any form of media or opportunity I have. I'm just fascinated with everybody. So that's yeah, ways you can get a hold of me. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, um, yeah, I mean, we love doing this. It's great to do it through Skype. I mean, you have technical difficulties, but for the most part, it works out great. <laughs> it opens up a door for all these things to happen. So you have to overlook some of the problems every once in a while. Absolutely. 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 Well, Michael, thank you so much time. So much time. She's like, <laughs> that's yeah. going to be edited out. <laughs> thank you for being with us, really, and taking time out of your schedule there. Out of your busy schedule, thank you for taking your time. <laughs> thank you, and thank you for, you know, uh, giving me a few minutes to chat with you, and thank you to everybody who watches the show. I mean, it's, as long as people keep watching, we'll keep making it. So thank you. It's, uh, it's really cool. Yeah, thank it's you. great. It was such a pleasure to finally connect with you and get you on the show to do this interview. And again, I know your schedule's busy, so we really greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much. We'll see you online and on yes. TV. <laughs> yes. We'll see you t maybe tonight. <laughs> oh, bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.
we're not recording now.